Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby and today we are going to be taking a kind of busted up, burnt out candle jar and turning it into a really cute faux earthenware jar. So if you guys haven't seen my how to easily clean out a candle jar, I'm going to link the video above and down in the description below and we will start the craft. So for this craft, we are looking at uh, creating some of our own Play-Doh. It's not going to be the kind that needs to stay Play-Doh. We're going to bake it. So we can leave out the cream of tartar. It's like a super simple recipe, just flour, salt, and water. That's all we're going to use. I'm not even going to color it because I want kind of a like natural clay color. And I will link everything you need down in the description below along with the ratios I use so that you guys can make your own at home. And let's get going. Okay, so now that our jar is totally clean and clear and looks so much better than it did before, I've got a few things that I am going to be mixing up. I just have a clear bowl for you and two cups of flour. We're baking, who knew? We actually are baking in this craft. Yeah. And about a half cup of salt. Basically what we're making is a bakeable Play-Doh. It's something that will like work like Play-Doh. Um, but it's got fewer ingredients. It's basically just salt, flour, and a little bit of water. And I forgot a spoon to mix it up with, so I will be right back with that. Back with my spoon. All right, a dough is starting to form, so I think that we're nearly done mixing. I'm going to start smushing it around in my hands and seeing if we can make it into a proper dough like ball. And I'm gonna switch the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing down on the craft table. So I'm just kind of stirring up my concoction, adding more and more water until it is the correct consistency. Once it starts to feel a little bit like dough, you can kind of knead it together with your hands in the bowl a little bit just to get all of the little crumblies. And then go ahead and knead it on the table just until it becomes the correct consistency. I find it helpful to work with a bowl of water next to me to be able to dip my fingers if I need to. But right now you're just going to want to take a small little slab, pop it on the top, and then press that into the table and then pull off the excess on the sides. This is going to give you a nice flat top to work with. We are going for kind of a rustic, more natural look, so don't worry about making it perfect. But go ahead and smush down the edges and then we are going to kind of take a larger piece of dough and roll it out into a big thick noodle. Again, not going for like perfection and super polished here, but we do want it to look nice. So we're going to clean up the edges a little bit. So roll out your noodle, maybe like half an inch to an inch thick, and we're going to roll it around the edges of the jar and clip off the excess and just kind of smush it down a little bit so that we've got a nice kind of side finish on the jar lid. Just so it looks a little bit more intentional. Next up is to go ahead and dip your finger in that little bowl of water that you're keeping off to the side and we are going to clean up that seam a little bit. I don't actually mind there being a seam because that's kind of the whole point of this is that it looks kind of like, you know, very rustically made, but I don't want that much of a seam. So I'm just going to dip my finger in the water and kind of rub the dough back and forth. It's going to reliquify a little bit and kind of give some of that slip and, uh, you know, just kind of camouflage it a little bit. Again, I'm not trying to erase it completely. If you are, just keep rubbing at it and it will eventually like disappear. I just want to camouflage mine slightly, but when it's good to go, I'm going to move on to the jar. Now there's many different ways that you can actually cover your jar with this. You can just like put it on pieces. You can decorate it. You can like make shapes in it. You could do cutouts. I'm going for the very rustic simple look. So I'm just going to roll mine out flat just on my craft table like this and using the jar to roll it is a good idea because then you can make sure that it is both wide enough and long enough and once you think it is you're just going to want to go ahead and gently kind of collect the edge of the dough to the jar and roll it up and over on itself so you get a nice smooth tight seal to the jar kind of blend in those edges a little bit and then you just have to work on shaping it this is going to differ depending on what jar you use and depending on what shape it is so Mine kind of taper at the corner, so I'm pressing it in, and then I need to remove the excess dough. So I need to remove it off the bottom. My jar is not going to have a bottom. It's just gonna be glass. It's just a personal choice. You can put dough there if you want, like, like make it your own jar. That's the whole point. It's your own craft and it should look how you want it to look. So I'm just cleaning up the top edges of mine. They are a little bit rough there. So I'm going to go back in with my water and kind of smooth those out a little bit. Anytime you put water on the dough, it's just gonna look a little bit softer on the edges. So again, I don't want it anything like super, super smooth, but 
just a little bit softer than a rough edge is perfect. And then it's all done and you're just going to want to put it on a foil lined cookie tray to put it in your preheated oven. I cook mine at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour. Now make sure that you do not put the lid on the jar when you cook it. That's really important. You don't ever want to seal something that you're going to heat up because the air will expand and that's a hazard. And pop it in the oven for roughly half an hour. Go ahead, start checking it then. It might take up to 40 minutes. So the jar is out of the oven and cooled down so that we can touch it. And it honestly, it's so cute. So I'm going to zoom in because you really can't see from this distance. I don't think we've got a couple little crack marks in it, which are really cool. And then like where the salt was, where the individual little like salt crystals are, you can kind of see them like they're, they're a different texture. They're almost translucent. It's this really cool kind of proper stone effect. It's super neat. Obviously the bottom is still glass. It's not really an earthenware jar. Obviously we just made it, but uh, the top baked well. Actually in retrospect, I definitely should have taken this plastic seal off. I didn't even think about that. Definitely do that. Nothing happened to it as far as I can tell. It does feel a lot more brittle than it used to. Um, I meant to take that off. I totally forgot. So don't be like me. Definitely do that. So the lid goes on if you want it. Otherwise, just put it next to it as a decor piece. And this is a super cute little jar to stash whatever goodies you want in there. So the thing about this jar is I started with a candle jar which are not food safe. And I know at the store, when I buy glass things, they say that they are or aren't food safe. This will never be food safe. I don't actually know what that means, but it was not intended for food. So don't store food in there. Like don't make it a cookie jar or anything. If you wanna make like a cookie jar or something like that, use a container that started out saying it was labeled food safe. Otherwise for something like this, you can store pens in it, you can store coins, you can store faux flowers, you could store real flowers it's because it is a glass jar and you can fill it up full of water and just have your beautiful blooms coming out the top and use it as an earthenware base. There's lots of different ways you can use this. I think it's cute and I hope you guys do too. Thanks so much for joining me on this one. I'll see you here again soon. Bye for now. All right, guys, so how cool is this? You can see there is so much texture. It's really awesome. So these aren't even actually, well, some of them are depressions. I was gonna say they're not even depressions. Some of them are, but the rest of them are just like the little bits of salt in the dough. And it's really, really cool looking. You can see, um, if I can get it to focus, those aren't pits. Those are all like areas where the salt was and they're translucent. It does have a little bit of my fingerprints from my rings when I put it in. It's got a lovely little cracking design. That was not intentional. That's just because the dough shrunk. But it is really cool. And I hope you guys like it.